when you have an awakening, this is the beginning part of the process. There's no turning it off. It's like a genie in a bottle. Once the genie's out, you can't put it back in. Now, it's a question of how far did the energy rise? Because the energy rises from the bottom of the spine and it rises up your sp spinal column and it wants to break open all of these different chakric points, which are along your, your, uh, your, your subtle body. And it wants to rise to the center of your brain, okay? And then rise to the top of the head and open the, 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 the lotus, okay? So that then that's called the full Kundalini awakening. The soul wants to evolve because when we were children, our souls were, we were in our souls. And then as we matured, and when you got into our, you know, t teenage years, the ego was really developed. And then the ego took hold of the consciousness. And so it begins usually the longing for spirituality in early 20s. Okay. And early 20s and onwards. And then because this, it's all about getting the soul uh, to exalt itself over the ego. Because the ego and the soul are always fighting in the body and the consciousness. You can never kill the ego and you can't destroy the soul. So they're always fighting for supremacy. So a Kundalini awakening process is a process of in, in, in activating this body of light, okay? Uh, infusing these chakras with light energy, because that's what Kundalini is, it's light energy, so that you can become enlightened, right? When people say, oh, I'm enlightened, what that should imply is that they've awakened their Kundalini energy to the crown, and now their chakras are functioning at full capacity. A lot of people in meditation, the energy, they activate the kundalini at the base of the spine. The energy starts either spiraling up or just moving straight up the spine. It's all in the spinal column. It's all happening in the spine inside the spinal column. And it wants to rise up. And when that energy takes over the consciousness... When it so infuses your body and your consciousness that it takes it over, you go into what's called spontaneous kriyas. A lot of people do that. So they start, you know, going into different poses and things just automatically. And then you're looking at yourself from outside of yourself being like, wow, how is this happening? This is, you know, like I feel possessed, but in a, in a good way, you know. And this process then, it, but the purpose is for this energy to rise up all the way to the inside the brain that's what it wants to do so it's an automatic process okay it's our job to activate it with meditation and kriyas and different practices like uh, through yoga and there's you know there's various means you know people do it through psychedelic ayahuasca there's all kinds of ways people awaken this energy mostly spontaneously and then it's a process of raising the energy to the brain that's the key the, the book that's absolutely changed and transformed the kundalini community which is why you know my work has become so popular is my second book and that's the one that most people most people have and they and and and, and, we, and I'll, very often i discuss the contents of this book with people because this breaks down the entire science of the kundalini awakening process and and it's a science and and nobody before me the kundalini science was a very loose term but because I devoted my whole life to this, and I guess I was just meant to do this, uh, I ended up devoting two and a half years to writing this book, a year and a half to the previous one. And obviously, this is my you know purpose in life, my, my mission, my goal, to teach this science to people. Because there's various answers in spirituality. All spirituality aims the same thing. All religion aims at the same thing, which is enlightenment. You're dealing with uh, religion. Religion is a lot more... Um, there's a fundamental aspect. There's an aspect where religion is studied, uh, the scriptures are studied literally, you know, and there's uh, obviously political issues in religion where you have somebody that's in charge and now they become your middle person, the middle man between you and God, okay? But the true spirituality and the way ancient people taught it is that God is within. Most people know that. It's kind of common sense. But it's a matter of when you connect to that, what you're trying to do is raise this kundalini energy up into the center of your brain and then raise it to the top of your head to open this lotus, which then creates a connection with your higher self because you're God, I'm God, you know, everything and everyone is God. When we establish that connection, 
then we don't need teachers anymore. We don't need guides. I teach a very non-traditional approach. The traditional approach is that you need to find a guru, a kundalini guru, that's going to guide you through this process. I don't believe in that. Because you're putting your, your faith and your power into somebody's hands. How, do, how can you trust that person? I'll tell you 100%, most of them, you can't. Okay, that's a fact. And by learning to take control over your spirituality, you are gaining autonomy over your individuality, over yourself, over who you are, your soul, spirit, body, ego, all of it. Okay, and you're learning how to create that God connection. Awakening the Kundalini, raising it to the brain, into the top of the head, that's the way in which you become God. You become a demigod. It's a universal process. Uh, this is very important to understand. People say, a lot of people in India, they tell me, oh, Kundalini is Indian science. No, it's not. It's a universal science. It's like we're all different cars. We all have a different body, but on the inside, we each have an engine. We each have the same components to make the car run. That's what the Kundalini system is. It's a universal thing, but you need to activate it. Okay. But once you've activated it, it's, it's, it changes, it starts to change everything. And it's a long process. It's a long process. Some people think, oh, you have a full awakening. You're enlightened. It doesn't work like that. You have a full awakening. Now you have more responsibility to cleanse your chakras. And yes, over time you will reach that enlightenment state. Or if you have a gradual approach, then, you know, um, it will be a little bit easier because you won't be dealing with so much negativity because you have to cleanse what's inside of you. We all have darkness. We all have darkness that the ego took on over the years that these, this, these demons that we have inside of, there are demons. It's our job to bring them to the light, master them, learn about them and give them their wings. The purpose of life is spiritual evolution. So the Kundalini process is it's your purpose in life. It's your mission in life. There is no other mission. M my books are tools. They're tools, they're knowledge, but inside each of my books, there's a lot of practice, okay? And my job with each book, the purpose was to take myself out of the equation as the person that's the guru, to just give you all the knowledge so that you can become your own guru. Because I believe that that's the path going forward for humanity. It's not anymore about looking for someone to guide you. It's about you becoming your own guide. When you find something that you truly love and you have passion for, money just comes automatically. And we should, we are meant as human beings to live in abundance. We are. But to do that, to activate true abundance, you have to find something that you are passionate about, something that for you doesn't feel any like a job so that every day when you're doing it, you do it out of love. You know, like what I, what I do with this work, I don't, I haven't worked a day in my life, but I'm working all the time because I love doing what I do. I would rather do what I do every second of every day than, you know, watch Netflix or something because this gives me fulfillment. It fulfills my soul. And that's essentially what the purpose is. Unconditional love. That's what this is all about. So you see like Kundalini energy the purpose is to raise it, and when it raises, it comes It comes into your heart. It takes over your heart. It takes over your mind. It takes over your brain. It changes. It transforms you. You know, the, the, the energy of light, that's what this is. Energy of light is the energy of love. It's the same energy. It's the fifth dimension. This is the dimension that connects us. We're connected through this energy of love, and the energy of love is what gives you morality, and it gives you ethics. It gives, it builds character, right? You have in life, you have personality and character. Character is a part of you. That's your sun self. That's because we are the sun. See, this is the great mystery of it all, by the way. We are each in, we're in the sun. Our consciousness is in the sun. We are the light of the sun. That's what, that's, that's the highest expression of God for us is the sun. But we also have part of us that's lunar. Okay, so this part that's lunar is built on duality because the, the, the light reflects, uh, it's the reflection of the light of the sun. So there's illusion. When the, whenever there's illusion, it's not truth. Now it's half truth. Some parts true, some parts not true. But a Kundalini awakening allows your soul to become inflamed by this light so that it can leave the body. And now you're in the sun.
you're present inside the sun and you've completed your mission here on this planet and you go beyond duality, right? So you look at monks and, and adepts and sages, they're always talking about transcendence. It's about transcending this world. What that means is it's about transcending duality. And the Kundalini awakening mechanism is when you have activated it and you have optimized this Kundalini circuit that I talk about in my book, you automatically overcome the mind, which is duality. The mind feeds on duality and there is unity and that's the spirit. And so the spirit comes in and now you, you attune to the higher self and you operate from unconditional love and and the spirit and you are now transcend duality and this is how you attain true bliss because people always say you know they're looking for the meaning of life no they're not they're looking for uh they're looking for the experience of of being happy in life of being fulfilled and the only way to do that the only true way is uh, with spiritual fulfillment and becoming more becoming more spiritual and being awakened are the same thing. So saying I want to be more spiritual means I want to be more awakened. We have individual consciousness, right? That's the consciousness looking through these eyes, these ears, I can hear, taste, knows all of that. But then we have cosmic consciousness. And so when you awaken the Kundalini and you awaken this flower, you your consciousness expands. And now you can experience cosmic consciousness. And this is the source of all psychic powers. You know, when people say, oh, I can see, you know, things before they happen or I can hear things at a distance or, or you know, have inner sight. That's because they're attuned to this cosmic web, this consciousness, the quantum field that connects all of us through love energy. And now you're operating at a different framework. You're directly interfacing with energy instead of, you know, uh, allowing instead of relying on your ego to guide you in life also has to do with attuning yourself to the present moment because the present moment is a field of pure potential you know this is where we can remake ourselves and be anything and everything that we want but it's the ego that holds us back that and the ego thinks in terms of past and future so it's thinking in duality when you awaken the kundalini you raise it to the brain uh, and, and and open sahasrara above you automatically attune to this world of non-duality which gives you constant inspiration and this is the best part is that you can live in pure inspiration 24 7 that means that you're always present in the moment doesn't matter what's happening you're always living in the moment and you're inspired and when you're inspired you can achieve and you can do anything the world is your oyster there's nothing there's no limits to what you can achieve you truly are superhuman uh I'm trying to make superheroes here. Marvel movies and like superhero movies, DC movies, they reflect something in the human psyche that is our inner longing, our understanding that this is who we are, that we are superheroes. We have incredible powers. You know, we can't fly through the air physically, but we can fly in astral dreams and experience it like it's real and it's an incredible feat. And this is also one, this is one of the gifts of the Kundalini is experiencing this astral realm and experiencing it with your body of light where you're fully conscious in your dream states and you can travel on all over this planet. You can go visit the pyramids, you can visit Machu Picchu, you know, or you can travel in on different planets in different solar systems and talk to extraterrestrial beings. Okay. This is all very real. And, but they contact you. They don't contact you physically, at least in my experience, they contact you through consciousness. Because it's all about consciousness. Kundalini is a consciousness expansion trigger that is essentially our the future of our evolution. It's the future. It's the evolution of the human race. It's our future. And we're each meant to do it. And right now, what's happening on a mass scale, more and more people are developing these types of longings and they're awakening this energy. And it's a matter of time before there's a snowball effect. and you know, that type of thinking and that type of mentality and these types of people like all like us will completely take over the world. This is the golden age, you know, the age of Aquarius. This is the this is what this is the second coming of Jesus Christ. This is what's talked about. It's not it's not a guy coming up in the clouds. It's, it was never about one man or one woman. It was about 
the 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 future of the human race. It was about consciousness expansion, and it was about the apostles predicting the return of Jesus, meaning that that consciousness that he that he showed to the world, that consciousness of pure love, that unconditional love, uh, that transcendence, that that will be something that all of us will experience. There are three psychic knots along the spinal column, not in the spinal column, but on this in the subtle part of the spinal column through which the kundalini rises there are three psychic knots and for the kundalini to rise all the way to the top of the head each of these psychic knots has to be broken through so they're called grantis okay so when the kundalini rises these are psychic blocks with in, in between where the different chakras are so there's a final there's this is the final one okay called the rudra granti there's the final knot in between this chakra and the crown. There's a knot inside here, okay? Most people, they'll raise the kundalini up to that point, and then the kundalini will drop back down. And then it'll raise up again, and it'll drop back down. And the key is to for the kundalini to rise with so much force that it forces its way through that psychic knot and reaches the top of the head. It wants to rise to the top of this point here. This is called... The Brahma Randra, okay? And the Brahma Randra is a very small area in the center of your head, okay? And as babies, we had, uh, this is where the anterior fontanelle is of the babies where when our skulls get formed, and this is the part that's soft on the baby's head. And so as babies, we had the connection to the white light. But as we matured and we got older and like the skull formed more, it closed it up. It closed it up. And so the purpose of the Kundalini is to rise and break through that Brahma Randra again. And when it does, then the light can come out and open this thousand petaled lotus, which is literally like a lotus that just opens all these various petals open. And it can take you years for the energy to, to strengthen itself enough to open all of these petals. The Kundalini is intelligent energy. It doesn't need me or you. It doesn't need anybody. What it needs from you is for you to awaken, to awaken it. Once it's awakened, it, it, it does everything on its own. But then it's a matter of you maintaining spiritual disciplines and maintaining spiritual practice daily so that the, kundal, so that the kundalini is, when it's hammering out the different blockages inside your body and your chakras, so that it's just flowing smoother. You know, because over time we... We have these nadis, right? So these nadis are energetic channels inside the body, and they're connected to they're connected to the chakras. The chakras are energetic vortices along the spine of the body. Uh, okay, the subtle body, the body of light, and then there's these um, these nadis, and then you have your nervous system. All these nerves emerging out of your back, out of your spine. And they're 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 moving into um, different areas of the body where there's a lot of these nerves like working together, and that's where the chakras are. The Kundalini awakening process takes place on a subtle and on a physical level. On a subtle level, it's all energy. On a physical level, this energy is trying to electrify the cerebrospinal fluid in your spine. Because when that fluid gets electrified, it activates, there's three components, four components to the human brain that are most important. Uh, and that's called, in Hinduism, it's called the cave of Brahma. And you have the pineal gland, pituitary gland, the thalamus, and the hypothalamus. When you have raised this energy via the, um, the third ventricle, so you have different ventricles in the brain which are constantly channeling this cerebrospinal fluid. Okay, it's constantly going up and down and it's being channeled and it's bathing these central uh, areas in the brain, these major brain centers. When this energy becomes electrified by the light of the Kundalini, it activates and optimizes these brain centers so that they're functioning at their highest level, highest capability. And that's what awakens these latent areas of the brain. There's two components that that Ajna Chakra consists of. Okay, so this is Ajna Chakra. It's in the center of the brain, okay? And you have the 
the pituitary gland, hypothalamus, thalamus, and pineal gland right here. Okay, and this is all the cave of Brahma. This is where the transformation happens on a on an anatomic, on a brain anatomy level. Okay. And so you have what's called the, the tunnel of Ajna. This is what you're trying to focus on when you are meditating. But then you also have the flower head of Ajna. The flower head of Ajna is right here. The tunnel of Ajna is right here. Okay. And so that's important to, un to, to know the distinction. There's all these various psychic eyes. That I call them psychic eyes. They're different energy points along the head. And I, by the way, I discovered most of these as I've been going through the Kundalini awakening process. So Hara Chakra is right here. Okay. So you see your third chakra, your second chakra, Hara Chakra is in the middle. So it's where the navel is. So when we eat, food gets transformed in our stomachs in that area. And then that food transforms into pranic energy, okay, light energy. And then that light energy feeds the, the nadis, the 72,000 nadis of the body, it feeds, it feeds the chakras, it feeds the entire subtle body system, that food, okay? Also, sexual energy. This is very important. So, kundalini, when you think about what is kundalini, kundalini is not pranic energy. Kundalini is not sexual energy. Kundalini is a force that's created by uniting sexual and pranic energy. Okay, that's why kundalini risings are accompanied by feelings of excitement in the belly area. That's almost like an or or orgasmic, ecstatic, okay, like butterflies in the stomach, like falling in love. Pranic energy, it's called mundane kundalini, and it's, it's a loose term that's not used often. When you're using the term kundalini, you're referring to this force that I'm talking about. That force is always pumping through the spinal column, okay? It's when it's activated, when the kundalini becomes activated, that force coalesces and it's sublimated and transformed in your belly area, in this hara chakra area. And then it, it turns the spine into a pump. So it's no longer, so the mechanism, the activation mechanism now becomes a pump and it's pumping kundalini through the spinal column. It's pumping it upwards, okay, through the central nervous system, all right? on both an anatomic level through the cerebrospinal fluid and a subtle energy body level, okay? And these chakras which lie along the spine are being infused by this light energy, 